So today I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about some observations, tips and tricks on reducing LVM build times. Um, as compiler engineers, a lot of us work with benchmarks day in, day out, um, spec, core mark, dry stone. Um, but the benchmark I think we should really care about is how fast can I build LVM, which um, particularly if you're hacking away on LVM backend, you can end up iterating quite a few times. Um, so I've got a few, uh, a few stats here, um, kind of health warning. They're all um, kind of rough and for fun. I can't guarantee they're all completely reproducible, but I think broadly correct. Um, this is building on a relatively beefy uh, desktop system, uh, Ryzen 9 5950X, 16 cores. Um, and uh, I guess I've included kind of full build commands more for future reference and something I'll go through right now. And I'll pick through a, a few things that um, uh, can be helpful for slightly faster incremental builds. Um, before doing that, um, this is kind of how a standard release build of LVM, particular, uh, specifically Clang, LVM, and LLD, with all of the default targets that evolved over time. Um, on the left side, you see the kind of most recent. This is just by building the first commit, um, so, or the, 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 the commit on the first of every month over the last 18 months. Um, you know, the, uh, so, and the metric there is the number of LVM builds per hour going from you know, if you, at the beginning of this month, around about a little bit over five, to go back in time 18 months, you can manage a little bit over six. Um, and this is maybe partially due to LVM itself getting a little bit slower, um, but a, a big part of it is going to be um, you know, more code being committed, so there are more files to be compiled, certainly more table gen stuff as new backends that are added, like uh, at some point in there, Long Arch became a, a standard backend, so it was built. Um, a few other fun stats, we always like to compare ourselves to GCC, and it still is the case that Clang is a faster way to build Clang and LVM. Um, this is building with a kind of recent um, distro packages, um, getting about 5.4 versus 4.3 for Clang versus GCC. Um, for this from scratch build of the release Clang and LVM, I actually didn't see much difference between the different linkers. Um, though this, as we'll see on the next slide, um, the stress on the linker is massively reduced for the release build versus debug builds, which, as you may know, if you've, if you've done work with debug, debug builds, are absolutely huge. Um, so this is just using CMake build type is, is debug. Um, and then the parameters we're playing with are shared libs and split dwarf. Um, so shared libs kind of does what it says on, on the tin rather than um, linking all of the LVM subcomponents as .dot .a files into um, large into large binaries. You have you know Clang, LC, all those tools um, linked dynamically to separate LVM components uh, .so files. This isn't the default build config. Um, it kind of it mostly works. It should work, um, but it does break every now and again because uh, most of build bots don't build in this config. So it isn't all that unusual for a commit to be made that changes CMake list.txt. It doesn't properly include all the dependencies, but it works just fine on a non-shared build. Um, as you can see, um, for a from scratch build, there's not a huge amount of difference either with shared libs or split dwarf. Um, split dwarf just separates your debug info into separate files. Um, but if you start looking at a, a fairly standard incremental um, build scenario, so if you're modifying a single C++ file in one backend, in this case, RISC-5 ISO lowering in uh, the RISC-5 backend, um, just going with the default build options, the incremental build is relatively slow, 100 build, incremental builds an hour. If you're stuck using, um, or you fail to switch away from using um, BFD, it's very, very slow, only 14 builds an hour. You're spending a huge amount of time linking. Um, shared libs, much faster, 400 or so. Um, split dwarf is a performance improvement, and then using both is, is, is the best. Um, I should say there is a downside to using shared libraries, which is that the startup time for um, the individual LVM binaries is increased, and you'll see that if you're running the full test suite. Um, so there's, as with most things in life, there's, there's no free lunch, it's a, it's a trade-off. Um, and you also see that um, the table gen build times are, uh, can, can be uh, dominate, particularly if you change one key file like intrinsics.td. Um, that generates most of it, and these build, build settings don't make a huge difference if you're spending most of your time in table gen. There are settings that can help with that, like the LVM optimized table gen. Um, warning there is that it's very easy to write incorrect table gen um, because the, most of the checking doesn't actually occur in the um, 
in the in the um, release build, and so it's easy to, to miss that if you're building with that. And there's a number of other things there to uh, to look into. Um, so, thank you very much. I'll be posting a series of blog posts soon that kind of go into more detail and also look at stats across different build machines. Thank you. Thank you.